Hey guys, it's Elena. Today I wanted to introduce you to my brand new Pressed Flowers brush set for Procreate. I've been collecting source material for this brush set for years, since about 2018. I've been collecting flowers and I've been buying flowers and I've been pressing them and scanning them. And I'm really excited that this has finally come together into this brush set, which includes dynamic brushes as well as stamps. And I love the concept of creating with flowers as an art form or artistic medium. And I'm really excited to show you some more projects about this. But first of all, I just wanted to give you a tour of the brush set itself, everything included and all of the basics to get you started. So when you first download the brushes into your download folder, you'll be able to find them on your iPad by going to the Files app, which looks like this. It's a white box with a blue folder on it. And when you open that up, you'll want to go and navigate to iCloud Drive Downloads. And this is where your download should have gone into. And you might have quite a lot more in your folder. You may need to scroll in order to find it. And so the zip folder is called Pressed Flowers Procreate Brushes. So we're going to tap that and then it creates this new blue folder. And then we tap that. And this is what you will see plus a PDF file, which I have not added yet at this point. So there are two brush set files. There's the multi-flower brush set and there is the build-a-flower brush set. And then there are two swatches files. There's the pressed flowers um, warm and cold. And these are just suggested colors. So you'll also notice there is a folder called the counterclockwise version. And this is because some of these brushes are directional and these, the ones in the main folder are optimized for clockwise flow. So if you are drawing a flower, you would make a circle in a clockwise direction. However, I know that for some people, if you are left-handed or if you were taught a different way, you will want to use a counterclockwise flow. So the brushes in this folder are exactly the same, but they go in a counterclockwise direction. So it's completely up to you which one of those versions you would prefer to use. So in order to load these into Procreate, what you should be able to do is just to tap. I tapped on multiflower.brush set. And so once that has finished importing into the Procreate app, if you open up a document and go to your brush library, it should be at the top of your brushes list. So that's what's happened here. And the same thing goes for the swatches. When you tap those, they import to the end of your swatches list. So I have both of the swatches up here already. We've got the cold colors and the warm colors. And like I said, these are just suggested colors. You'll notice that quite a lot of them are dark colors because of the way that these brushes are made with real flowers, you'll notice that um, the texture is, is varying wide, widely. The color comes out in the darkest part, but then part of it is like lighter versions of that. So that's why I always say to try and use darker saturated colors. And these are just suggestions, but you can use any colors that you want. So I just wanted to note that most of the brushes in both of these folders have a dual color functionality. Any brush that is labeled with dual color at the end will take two different colors that you can choose. So if you go up to your color wheel up here, you'll see right below it two different colors. So the, currently this dark burgundy is the primary color and this red is the secondary color. And you know that this is the primary color because it matches the dot up here. So if we want to change that to blue, we would just select the blue and you can see it's changed here and it's changed here. That is our primary color. But let's say we wanna change this one as well. We'll just tap that and that becomes the primary color. And let's choose a color from the warm palettes. Let's go with this peachy pink here. So now going back to the disc, you can see that we have pink as the main color, the primary color and blue as the secondary color. So if we want this to come out in one of the dual color brushes, that's all you have to do is just to choose both of those colors. And then you can see that we have, we have the pink, we have the blue, we also have this purple that is kind of a mix between the two. So you'll get colors that are in between the two. So if you don't want a lot of color variation, you can choose two colors that are similar 
or you can even choose the same color. So let's say we wanted the flowers to only be pink and not have any blue. We'll just choose pink as both colors. So then you can see we don't have that variation. And if you want to turn off all color variation on a certain brush, you can also tap that and go to color dynamics and then take these sliders all the way down. I wouldn't suggest doing this unless you have made a duplicate of the brush so that you can have two different versions of it. But again, like I said, it's easier to just change to the same color if you want to have it come out in the same color, or then you still have the option to use two colors as well. So now that we've got our two colors chosen, I just wanted to demo some of these multi flower brushes. So we have some that are coming out with like small and very scattered like this. And then we also have some that are more closer together. And as I said, we can use these for landscapes. We can use them if you just want to add a lot of flowers in a hurry and just to decorate your lettering or anything else. I do have a tutorial coming that we will be decorating a letter with flowers and all of these were sourced from real pressed flowers that I pressed myself, scanned and cleaned up and made into brushes. And I couldn't bear to get rid of any of the pansies because I just love them all so much. There's quite a lot of poppies as well. Some of them are directional so you'll see that these are all pointing upward but then some of them, the pansies are like that too. So some, so that you can like make stems to go with them if you're making a landscape. But then some of them, like the primrose and the daisies, doesn't really matter which direction they're pointing. So they'll just kind of scatter all around. And there is generally some pressure sensitivity in these brushes as well, so that they get bigger. See, I'm pressing there and I'm not pressing here. So you can just keep that in mind. We've also got petals in this folder and these are directional. So these are kind of fun to just decorate something with or just like make sort of a daisy chain effect. And they are also pressure sensitive. And we have a similar concept here with the flower line. These are kind of just like if you want to make a wreath of flowers, you want to just decorate with these lines. These are just kind of fun. So that is the multi flower folder. And where the real magic happens is in the build a flower folder. The concept behind this folder is that we have the different parts of a flower. So as this, the first starting point, we have the blossom. So there's two different ways that you can add a blossom. We have the dynamic blossom flowers at the very top of the brush set here. And we have quite a few of these and they are mostly made up of petals or flower clusters. And most of them are dual color, but some of them are not. And that is not, there's not really any rhyme or reason to which ones are and which ones aren't other than that it just works with some and doesn't work so well with others. So let's just test this out. I'll show you how these work. So with all of, with all of these at the top here, you can make a full circle or a semicircle. So if you're making a full circle, that's kind of like making a little flower. If you're making a half circle, this is like a side flower. So if you're looking at the side and then you'd have a stem coming out like this. And I'll just show you a few more. See, this one is not dual color. So if I wanted that to be pink, I would just choose pink and it would come out only as pink. So very small circles come out as a full blossom or half circle as a side blossom. Some of them, like I said, are clusters that you can sort of make little clusters and then you can have them coming down. We've got our daisy, lilacs, And you can have less of a contrast. For instance, if we choose a dark uh, red and then a pink. So it's completely up to you which colors you want to choose, what kind of concept you want to go with. So 
So that is the dynamic build of flower blossoms. Another option that you have to start out with before you add the, the leaves and the stem is stamps. So I've included stamps in this same build of flower folder, but they are at the end instead of at the beginning. And that is just because I didn't want you to have to scroll past these in order to get to the stems and the leaves every time because there are quite a few of the stamps as well. So with the stamps, you have more control. You are able to, um, you're able to control the color very precisely and you just tap and, and you can control the direction of the stamp by the pointing of your pencil, your Apple pencil. And so let's just show you with a few more here. So those are the two options for adding blossoms. We've got the stamps and we've got the dynamic version. So after this point, what you can do is you can add stamens. Let's just find that here. So we've got the build a flower stamens and there's only two in this folder, but these can be something that you could add like in an orange or a yellow if you wanted something in the middle of your flower. So let's just try take this one. Oops and add a new layer and then we'll just put a little bit of stamens in here and there are two different kinds so you can actually mix and match them if you want to and moving on from that we've got the leaves and stems and as I was testing these out I was just kind of adding a, a stem and leaves and I was noticing that that was kind of problematic it didn't really look right so I had to look up what is that bit of green between the stem and the flower and it's called a sepal so I have three of these in different varieties and you can choose a green and use this to kind of especially with the side flowers this is really important to kind of add a little something here so that it kind of looks like it's building up to the flower. Like so. And with these ones, I kind of like to add it leading up to the, the bloom instead of going all the way up to the middle, like so. And moving on from that, we have three different stem brushes. And the main difference between these three is that they just have a different texture on the edges. This one's quite smooth. This one's a little bit textured. This one is a lot textured. And so then you would just make your stem come up and greet the sea paw like that. These are pressure sensitive so that you can use a, a light pressure in order to have a thinner stroke. So I started out with really light pressure and then ended with a lot of pressure. You can also use plenty of pressure to make the whole thing a bit bigger. You can do a taper, but with a quick stroke like that, you can do these little curly cues. You can use these for quite a lot of different kinds of stems. So I'm just adding in my stems. And then we also have our leaf brushes. And actually, let me just show you the sea paw and the stems on the stamp layer as well. So I'm gonna add another layer above this. Okay, so once you've done that little bit, we can then add the leaves. So we have seven different leaf textures here that you can use and these are all dynamic you can do a small flick to have kind of a long skinny leaf you can go slowly and deliberately with the flick at the end you can make the brush bigger and make a nice fat leaf 
And the same is true of all of these. They just have a different texture, each one. This one was made with rose leaves. So I'll just show you, we just add these to the stems just like that. So in this way, you can just build up your flower and all the different little flower parts and make some compositions or just a single flower in whatever way that you wanna do. So I just wanted to show you something that I made a few days ago with this concept. So I just decorated this, this letter L here and I made a video of this and I will be turning that into a tutorial soon. But you can see I've used stamps, like this is a stamp, this is a stamp, this one is dynamic, those are stamps, this one is dynamic. And so we just have these different, um, different, a couple different kinds of flowers, a couple different colors of leaves and stems, and we just kind of build it out like that. And here's another one that I did as well with mostly dynamic, but some stamps as well. And I also will be making a tutorial on how to do this one here. So something that I also wanted to show you is that when you are working on flowers, for instance, like this daisy and this pansy, in real life, a lot of them will have different colors in them. And the way that Procreate works is that they will all come out in the same color, the chosen color. And something that you can do in order to recolor different parts selectively is that you can go to the Magic Wand Adjustments menu and then go to Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. Now up here at the top, we've got this little menu where you can choose layer or pencil. If you choose pencil, then the effects that you do down here will only apply where you have used the pencil. But something to take note of is that you do still have to choose an appropriate brush up here. So we don't want to do this with our leaf brush, which is what was currently selected. Um, and what I suggest doing is going to the airbrushing folder, which is a default Procreate folder, and using the soft brush. So with the soft brush selected, you can go and, for instance, if we wanted to color only this bit here, we'll just make that a bit smaller. We can do that, and we retain the texture of the flower without losing that by painting over it. And so let's say we don't want it green. It's not actually controlled up here when you have the hue, saturation, and brightness. It's controlled by this slider. So let's say we wanted to have that be pink. We could even make it brighter pink. That looks a bit funny, so we're not gonna do that, but you could have it darker as well which I think works pretty well. And you can do the brightness and the saturation as well if you wanted something to be really dark in this area. So you can kind of play around with this and decide how you want it. Now, this is all in the same layer, so I wanna show you with this one as well, but I don't wanna mess this up because I'm happy with this. So what you can do is you can tap the screen and then press apply. So that means whatever you've done here is already done and whatever you do somewhere else is not going to affect that. So then we can feel free to go in here and maybe recolor the center of this flower and then maybe make that soft brush a bit bigger and go around the edge so that it's a smooth transition. And let's say we don't want that purple, maybe we want it green or blue and then we can apply that as well. So that is just an optional way to recolor certain parts of the flower if you want to go into that level of detail that is available to you. Something else that I also wanted to note is that if you are layering multiple flowers on top of each other, they will be a little bit see-through. And this is pretty consistent with how pressed flowers do actually look once they've been pressed and dehydrated. However, there is a, a workaround if you want them to be more solid that I've included. Um, let me just show you what I mean. So let's turn these on. So you can see that they're kind of they're kind of um, see-through. You can see other things through them. 
So if you wanted to, for instance, let's say we wanted this, um, this pansy to, we wanted this pansy to be covered up in the spots where these petals are covering. What we have to do, the, the part that we want to make more solid, we go to that layer, which is actually this one. Nope. Okay, actually this would have to be on top of this layer. So the layer that you want to make solid is the one that you wanna be on top. So let's go put that layer on top and then tap it, tap select. So now everything in this layer is selected. Now we're gonna to go to the color wheel and double tap by the white and now we have white selected as our color. So back to the build a flower folder. At the very bottom of this folder, we have a workaround brush included and I have included this in other brush sets like my greenery set and my mixed media set. But just as a refresher or just to introduce you if you're not familiar with my other brush sets, what you can do with this is that you can kind of go in and it looks like nothing's happening, but it takes a couple of passes because I wanted to give you more of a granular level of control. But by lifting the pen and then going back down, you can see it's already happened here actually that it's gotten more solid. And it depends on the brush itself, whether it gets solid fast or not. This one is a little more see-through in general. So it takes a couple more passes, but you can see that it starts to get more solid. And like I said, um, Pressed flowers are not fully solid usually. They usually are a little bit see-through. So you might not want to go completely solid on these, but you can see that it's a bit more solid now. So you can kind of use that brush to just add a little bit of, um, of solidifying to wherever you feel like it needs it. So we can do it again. I can show you again with this one here. So we tap, select, we've got white selected, we've got our solidifier brush selected and we can maybe make this rose a bit more solid by going over it like this. And you can see every time I lift up and go again, it gets a little bit more solid. And so now if we move that around, you can see that it has become more solid. So this is just not something that you have to do at all, but it's just an optional step if you want to layer things on top of each other without them showing through underneath. So I hope that this was helpful and I will of course be coming out with more videos on specific projects with these brushes in the future. I've got lots of fun ideas and thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.